Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from the Federal University of Minas Gerais in Brazil and today we shall take a look into a very simple programming language that has been a staple in every class on typing for us, the simply typed lambda calculus. Here is the syntax of the simply typed lambda calculus. Don't worry if it looks weird. Several programming languages today use lambda expressions and that might be more familiar to you. For instance, this figure shows a correspondence between our abstract syntax for the lambda calculus and the concrete syntax used, for instance, in SML New Jersey. You can stop the video and try to figure out the correspondence between these terms. Here they are. In the lambda calculus, we have constants, which we denote by C, like here. We have lambda expressions, which we denote with that lambda character in front of the expression, like so. We have variables, like x in this example, and we have function applications, which we denote as the juxtaposition of two lambda expressions. You can easily find the semantics of this programming language, for instance, in Pierce's book, that one on types and programming languages. We shall omit the semantics for brevity and focus on the typing rules used to type check lambda expressions. Here they are, the typing rules. Would you like to stop the video and try to read these rules? Instead of explaining how they work, the rules, let's try to show how, like what they do with an example. So we shall try to type check this expression on the top. First, let's try to find out the value of this expression first. We can write it in SML, for instance. Then we get the value 1. Can you try to figure out why this entire expression is 1? Try to see how substitutions work in the lambda calculus. But again, the exact semantics of the language is not so important now. Just assume that these expressions are actual programs, programs that return values. Thus, every program has a type, and every subpart of a program has a type as well. The goal of the rest of this class is to find these types. Let's see. These are the rules that we have. Which one can we use on the target example? That's TAPP. But TAPP asks for a lambda application. We need a left side and a right side expressions. What are these expressions in this example? Would you like to stop the video and try to find an answer for this question? Well, here's the entire derivation of these typing rules. They do look scary, but no worries, we will go over all of them. Let's start with the type of symbol y. Y is a function. You can see that by the arrow type. The type of y is t1 arrow t2. That's the type of a function. And in the example, we want this type to be int arrow int. So on the left side of the turnstile, we have a typing environment. A table, the gamma table, that relates variables to types. And the rule tvar says that if a variable y has a type big T in an environment, then y has type big T. We use the same rule to type variable x. This time x is not a function, it's a scalar, and it, its type is int. Notice that we are assuming an environment with types for y and x. Later, we will see how to infer this environment. 
and we can combine the types of y and x to have the type of the application of y upon x. If y is a function of int to int and x is int, then the result of passing x to y is an integer. Thus, this application has type int. And we can use this fact that y applied onto x has type int to infer the type of a lambda expression. The lambda expression is lambda of x is y applied onto x. The type of this expression is int arrow int due to rule TABS. Go ahead and stop the video. Try to read what rule TABS says. We can use rule TVAR to find out the type of a variable A, which we say that is an integer. It's an integer because the environment where TVAR is applied contains a mapping of A to int. We can apply TABS again to find the type of a double lambda expression. The expression is lambda of y is lambda of x is y applied upon x. Notice that the formal parameter of each lambda expression is annotated with a type. Thus, the type of y in this case is int arrow int. And here we have TABS, again to build a new lambda expression, this time using variable a. So this new lambda expression is the identity function, that is, lambda of a is a. And we can combine these two expressions to derive the type of an application. An application has two sides. If the left side has type t1 arrow t2 and the right side has type t1, then the resulting application has type t2. Perhaps you could stop the video and take a look into the rules. And we can combine this last fact with the fact that the constant 1 has type int to have the type of the final expression, which is int. Cool, is it not? We have a very complex expression and we know that it type checks. More yet, we know that the type of its entire expression is int, meaning that this entire program here is a number. So that's what we learn with its type. Thus far, we have only ints as basic types in our programming language. Let's add a few more expressions just to have booleans in our language too. Could you design type checking rules for these new expressions, these four new expressions? Here they are. We have four new rules. T add for addition right here. TLTH for the Boolean comparison, right here, TAND for the Boolean conjunction, and TIF for the conditional expression. Now we are ready to define the type inference problem. So given a program with open type annotations, we want to be able to rewrite this program, assigning actual types to the type annotations in a way that the resulting program type checks. So when I say type annotations, I mean that these are like open variables and we need to fill up these open variables with actual types. That's a bit different than the type checking problem. In this case, the case of type checking, I mean. We want to know if we can apply the type checking rules on the, pro on the program, given an initial environment. The initial environment assigns types to free variables. Free variables are the variables that are used in an expression, but that are not declared in that expression. Here in this figure, you have an algorithm to compute all the free variables in a, pro in a program. The input environment needs to assign types to the free variables, otherwise we would not be able to type check the program. That's because they are not declared in the program and it's declarations that assign types to variables. 
So in this class, we saw how to type check the simply typed lambda calculus. In the next class, we will see how we can find out types for the open variables in a program. Hence, effectively doing typing, friends.